Lowe's Home Improvement announced that they wanted all DIYers to build thankful signs to show our support to the frontline and essential workers during COVID-19. I thought this was such a great idea, so I went out to my shop, pulled together the scrap wood that I had, and I came up with this sign. So let me show you what I did to build this. To start the project, I cut down a half inch sheet of plywood, 28 inches by 18 inches, which will make up the back of the sign. I also cut a piece of three quarter inch plywood, 13 inches by six inches, and that will make up the thank you sign that will go on top. Next up, I measured out to find the center of my piece of plywood. I'll be using these lines as guides while I make my sign. I clamped on the level just to give me a straight edge to follow with my cuts. Then using the miter saw, I cut 45 degree cuts on furring strips, cutting them slightly long so that I can cut the pattern in later. I like to start by first cutting all the boards. I make one set of cuts for one side and double them for the other. When I have all the furring strips laid out, I design my pattern and I draw it on with a pencil just to make sure I like it. I like to cut opposite sides at the same time and use a stop on my miter saw just to make sure that the cuts are mirrored exactly. This will just give my sign a uniform look. I ended up using a square just to make sure that my arrows on the top and bottom would somewhat line up. Just a look I was going for, not that you have to use this method. Furring strips are nice to use because they are inexpensive and they have a rustic charm to them that really seems to fit these signs well. Before painting, I make sure to number all of my pieces so that I know what quadrant they're supposed to go in and what color I want them to be. For the white on this sign, I'm using Sherwin-Williams Alabaster. I really like to use Sherwin-William colors. I feel like they have a good selection and the colors are really current to what you would want right now. But the trick that I've found is that you can go into your local hardware store and you can get a color match done and use their product instead. So that's the trick that I use for getting the color that I want while also paying a price that I feel is reasonable. Then I used Minwax Stain for the other boards. I used Natural on the light ones. I used red oak for the reddish medium color, and I used dark walnut on the dark ones. I prefer to use Mimwax. I feel that it gives a rich, pure color that doesn't look fake. Now to help me make sure that I'm getting my design completely lined up on one side, I ended up clamping on my level to give me a straight guide to go off of. I start off first by putting all of my pieces on the board, getting them lined up correctly, just so I can make sure that I'm putting everything where it needs to go. Because I had pre-labeled and marked which quadrant everything went in, this was a pretty easy, simple process. And at this point, I just gradually move everything up and over out of my way so that I can start with the middle pieces first. I brought a piece of sandpaper just because I like to make sure that my edges are lining up completely straight. Then I use some glue. I set the pieces in place and use my brad nailer just to nail them in. For this project, I was really excited to try a ombre color pattern. And I think it really looked good, especially with the white, it seemed to really pop. The other nice thing about this color scheme is it really can go with any look in just about any home. Once I finished one half, I moved on to the second. 
And you can see that I start off by doing the inner triangle first, then I work to the outside triangle. I glued, then placed all my boards in before using the brad nail. That way I made sure all of the boards fit in nice and tight. After everything had dried, I took it out to the shop and I used a backing board and my jig to cut the edges straight. And I'm not using anything fancy here. I'm using a worm drive jig that I made out of scrap wood and a worm drive that cost me $15. I'm also using just some clamps to hold everything in place. Yes, it would be really nice to have a fancy track saw for this process. However, they're expensive and it's not quite in my budget right now. So I'm using what I have on hand. The nice thing is that most of you will probably have these items in your shop as well. So this should be a process that you could easily do as well. I think it's important to know that there are so many tools out there that do the same thing. So if you find that you want to do something and you don't have the right tool, check around and see if there's an easier way that maybe you could use the tools that you already have by making a jig or something to go with it. I decided to use some scrap cedar for my frame just because I had some lying around and needed something to use it on anyway. Now for the inner sign, I thought that the cedar strips would be a little too thick. So I cut down some of the furring strips to use. I used the dark walnut stain on these pieces just because I felt that it would give a good outline to the inner sign and make it stand out. I attached my frame with wood glue and brad nails. Some of this wood that I'm using here looks very rustic, which luckily is kind of the in style right now, but I'm using what is available to me in my shop right now. And I'm doing the same process for the inner sign, just using smaller brad nails. The geometric pattern can be very eye-popping and your eye can tend to focus there. So by pushing out the thankful sign, I figured that people's eyes would be drawn to that first and that would be the main focal point. If any of you want to join in this fun project, please build a sign as well, post it on Instagram and hashtag build thanks. I made my thankful sign out of vinyl using my Cricut. You could make a similar sign and use a vinyl that's available from any of your craft stores, or there are many options that you could use to paint your own on without using a vinyl. I just found this the easiest for me, and it was something that I had on hand. Before attaching the sign, I made sure to put it in place and measure just to make sure that I had it lined up correctly. Once I figured exactly what measurements I needed on each side, I turned it over and I added glue on all areas except for the outer one inch. That way I could turn it over and get it exactly in place without putting glue all over the sign. Now some people like to go back and fill all the holes that the nails left and paint over those spots, but I kind of like the rustic charm of just how it looks here, so I'll be leaving it. I got one corner just where I wanted it and put in a brad nail, then moved around the rest of the sign and did the same process. I applied two coats of shellac over my sign letting it dry in between coats, just to protect the sign and to really bring out the bold colors in it. Thank you so much for watching. 
And to all frontline and essential workers, I just want you to know how thankful I am and I appreciate you so much during this COVID-19. We couldn't do it without you.